have uh, Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Good morning. How are you guys? Hello, oh, Daniel. Sorry. Good, good, good afternoon. How's it going? Can you hear me okay? Good afternoon. Good. Uh, going good. Yeah, uh, yeah. we can hear you well. And super good morning to you, Daniel. What's, what's the time right now? And where are you joining us from today? I am in Connecticut, about an hour east of New York City. So it's uh, 425 a.m. for me right now. <laughs> Still a little dark out. Oh, four oh, wow. yeah. a.m. Wow, yeah. isn't that brutal? Uh, <laughs> thanks yes, for yeah. thanks for joining in. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's funny. I was in India actually just two weeks ago, so I'm still adapting back to being on this time zone. So oh. at, at uh -huh. least I've uh, okay. I see. I'm I'm, I'm still I see. halfway in India. <laughs> okay. Great. Great, great. Welcome, so, welcome, welcome to the show, uh, uh, Daniel. And uh, uh, so, guys, Daniel, Daniel is a CTO, Chief Technology Officer of uh, Call for Code, and it's a multi-year competition. So, uh, I would like to more know more about this, Daniel. And uh, I think in today's call, you're going to talk about how you are solving some world's challenges uh, with with global developer uh, audience uh, using the Call for Code competition and initiative. Right, Daniel. Yep, that's right. So I'll talk to the program. Uh, so yeah, open we love to. Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please help us introduce yourself and and, uh, and and let us know what is Call for Cloud and and how people can can get to it. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, so I've got yeah, some Thank you. Uh, slides to take through. Not sure if we can pull those up. Wonderful. Okay, looks great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So um, my name is Daniel Crook. I'm going to be talking about Call for Code, which is a tech for good initiative that. Uh, IBM and Red Hat are very closely uh, integrated into as the founding members. So um, if you want to connect with me, I've got my uh, LinkedIn uh, QR code up there. I'm also on Twitter and, and GitHub too. So you can kind of see some of the activity and news about Call for Code um, uh, through my social uh, connections there. So I'm going to talk a bit about what actually Call for Code is, what sets it apart from other tech for good initiatives, and I'll highlight a few of the more recent projects and some of the great technology that has driven a lot of interest in India. Um, so there's some technology there for uh, clean groundwater detection assessments, uh, earthquake resiliency, uh, wildfires, pandemic safety, and uh, post-disaster rescue. Um, so there's some great technology, some great open source projects that you can learn about, be inspired by, and uh, get yourself prepared with new skills for next year's Call for Code event. So Call for Code is a, um, it's a partnership between IBM uh, with Red Hat as part of IBM, the United Nations, the Linux Foundation, and David Clark Cause. Uh, so it started out as an initiative uh, in 2018, and it uh, started with a single global multi-month hackathon or, or, or competition where we wanted folks to take on some of the world's greatest challenges with open source and IBM and Red Hat technology. And what really sets it apart from other tech for good competitions where we recognize great innovation and winners is that we want the solutions, uh, in particular the top solution each year, to um, be incubated, uh, to be brought forward from uh, the raw innovation that it won the competition with through uh, testing and implementation to eventually be something that can live on as an open source project uh, and make a real impact in the real world. So delivering on that promise of innovation, getting the support and actually putting it to work. Uh, so what it's been doing over these years is connecting developers, the world's 24 million developers, together with experts in major issues, humanitarian issues, climate change issues, disaster resiliency, pandemic issues, and um, inspiring them to take on those challenges and really create amazing solutions and direct their skills towards these important problems. So we did launch in 2018 uh, with the global challenge focused on uh, how do you address natural disasters. With that, we've evolved towards, okay, let, can we look at the health and well-being of people affected by disasters, such as those battling wildfires, the firefighters that keep us safe. Um, and then in 2020, in our third year of the global challenge, it was a completely unique year on many fronts. Uh, we launched with a focus on climate change, so the source of many of those disaster resiliency-related um, challenges. And we also add tracks for um, how do we address the social and business aspects of the pandemic, and how do we take on racial justice around the world, but particularly uh, with a focus on what we can do as IBM Red Hat employees in the United States um, with the reckoning that we had last year that, that, that continues to go on right now. And... We did just wrap 
our final, uh, our, our fourth global challenge. Uh, and one of the teams actually was from India that won the entire competition. So we're very excited to support them in 2022. So uh, if you look up Google, um, Call for Code on Google, you'll see a lot of great projects that have come out of the initiative, a lot of challenges taken on, not only through that yearly global challenge, but also through what we call spot challenges. Uh, so things that if, shorter term hackathons that come up, uh, just like one we just concluded with Samsung around how do you help um, first responders, how do you help uh, frontline workers like teachers and delivery folks uh, use technology uh, based on a mobile application, an Android application to, um, to take on some of the world's greatest challenges. And Samsung put together, their, uh, put up as a prize, one of their, um, their brand new Z Fold devices as an award. Um, and many of the call for code uh, winning teams and each of actually these global challenge finalists this year receive a cash prize. Uh, Softwater, the one from India that won, uh, received two hundred thousand dollars. They'll get support from the Linux Foundation and uh, the IBM Service Corps to help them deploy and test their solution. And the other solutions, another one from India as well, was in third place. Uh, one from uh, China was in second place, and two from Australia were in fourth and fifth place. Also receive uh, su uh, cash support. And uh, they do have an option to deploy their solution through the Linux Foundation as open source projects when they're ready for that. So uh, are we focused on climate change yet again last year, particularly looking at zero hunger, clean water and sanitation, responsible production and consumption. Um, and that's where you'll see that soft water uh, really addressed that clean water issue, sustainable development goal from the United Nations number two. Um, so if you wanna check out the most recent innovation that's come through Call for Code, you can check out the awards replay, kind of hear some of the great stories about Call for Code uh, and get yourself ready for next year's competition, which will probably launch um, around the March or April timeframe. Uh, so go check that out. Now, as I mentioned, it's not just about the prizes, the recognition, the awards event. What we really do with each of these top teams is we make sure that they go from that really exciting moment of creating the innovation and working with the IBM Service Core team, which is a set of volunteers from across the company and hardware expertise, software expertise, branding, business models, um, architecture, things like that, is we, we incubate that top solution. We connect them with partners on the ground, whether it's a university, whether it's a large nonprofit organization, such as the UN or other um, um, folks that can help them learn more about the issue they're solving, test out their solution, give them feedback, embed their own client, as it were, within their Agile team uh, to flesh out and improve that solution. So we work with them on the functional, non-functional requirements. We connect them with the partners, do field tests, and um, we help them get to a point where they can live on as a startup, or maybe they've improved their own NGO's mission if they come from an NGO, or uh, if they're part of a large enterprise, such as Infosys in India, um, maybe they create a product around that or create a framework uh, for something else that they can use in their line of business. So really this is what sets Call for Code apart is this, this pre-seed incubation that gets them ready, not only as sustainable organizations, but also as the open source projects that are released at the Linux Foundation. And so if you go to um, the linuxfoundation.org uh, website here, uh, actually just go to linuxfoundation.org. If you just pull down projects, you'll find a link to Call for Code as well. Uh, it's up there next to the CNCF and, and Kubernetes, um, as many of the Linux Foundation projects highlighted there. You'll find uh, 14 projects that have come out over the years that have gone through that incubation process, and they're ready for you to learn that technology, whether you're interested in IoT, data science, analytics, uh, Java, um, uh, lots of Node.js projects in there as well. Uh, learn about the tech, build your own skills, um, and then contribute back to them. Ideally, we want to see these be improved with your skills, the ones that you have in various different backgrounds um, to bring these forward and make a difference in your community. So uh, we've got the GitHub repository. I can kind of click through that uh, in a bit here, but uh, you can check that out. And of the 14 we do have, seven are focused on uh, the Call for Code for Racial Justice Initiative. So these came from Red Hat employees, came from IBMers originally, um, not through a competition framework, but using the Call for Code model uh, for incubation, testing, and deployment. And so these have been um, really important this year, helping make positive impact 
on issues like justice and policing uh, versus uh, the, 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 the problems we've heard uh, around using facial recognition in negative ways. The, the point here is to use this technology in a positive way to expose injustice, uh, to provide information that can be used by citizens, by law enforcement to uh, make a positive difference. Uh, and closely related to that is the inclusive naming uh, initiative, uh, which is kind of ways to to be more sensitive uh, when using terms such as you know primary and replica servers and, and their previous terms, things like that. Um, in particular, on the IBM side, what we do for each of these projects is we help folks learn new skills. As I mentioned, if you want to learn data science, if you want to learn IoT, if you want to learn um, React, if you want to learn uh, Android programming, um, all of these projects are based in open source themselves, in addition to being open source projects. So uh, you can check out the readings for each of them, learn about the project. We generally have tutorials um, where you can learn how to, for example, use a visual recognition process in Watson Studio to train uh, a model that can identify construction elements, which I'll talk about in one of the projects. Um, and then there's contribution guidelines. So you can learn about the existing communities, who's involved, meet some colleagues, um, and maybe start to uh, find some job opportunities through these open source communities. So just a great way to build skills, make a difference, and, um, and meet others. Um, so let me dive in to some of the existing projects we have that might be of interest to you. And in particular, um, some of the ones that do have uh, communities already in India. That, are, that, could, that you can join. So Project OWL was a team that won the global competition in 2018. And over the past few years, they've uh, they created a business model and released their core technology as the Cluster Duck protocol with the Linux Foundation. So you'll see a lot of call for code projects have two names. Uh, that's because the Linux Foundation, as a neutral home of open source projects, uh, has its own, owns the trademark, things like that. So there's usually a just like with Red Hat, you've got Linux as kind of the open source project and Red Hat the company. Uh, that's kind of the way many of the call for code projects work is there's two names like that. So what uh, Project Al created through the Clustered Up Protocol open source project is an emergency mesh network that can be put together quickly and cheaply um, based on very common IoT standards on uh, development tools. So Arduino based, you can build it with platform IO, GitHub Actions and Travis do that within GitHub to build it out for many different boards. Um, and they also provide an analytics dashboard. So you can see all of these mesh nodes for emergency communications. And um, you can use an Android app to detect one nearby. Um, what it does for communities is after a storm when there's no connectivity at all, uh, it provides a layer of just about 1% to 2% connectivity, just enough so people can send some messages over the network uh, and what it uses is the captive portal already on your mobile device. When you join a Wi-Fi network, that login screen, it actually overrides that, and that's the app you use um, for communications. And um, they won a grant from the World Bank this year, deployed this. This is why I was in India a few weeks ago. Um, in Himachal Pradesh, we deployed 45 cluster duck protocol project down nodes in Shimla, a very mountainous region, prone to disasters, earthquake activity, landslides. Um, and really tested it in that challenging environment of mountains and how do you relay uh, radio communications around that. So this is a really great one. If you join the community, you can learn about that deployment and other ones they have planned for India, um, in addition to what they've done in Puerto Rico and um, in the United States. So IoT, analytics, um, UI frameworks, uh, this could be the project for you to join. Um, another interesting project, this one's built on React. Um, Originally, it was React Native um, to build mobile apps for Android and iPhone, but ended up being actually more of a uh, progressive web app. Uh, so something that was just built um, as a web app could be deployed to any platform. And the intent here is for someone to just set up a reservationless system of joining a line somewhere. Maybe it's a large store, maybe it's a small store, um, and just getting the information is, you know, I'm here, maybe even a voting location. I'm here, call me in uh, when it's safe to do, do so. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, in a way that's not something you have to log into, not something that holds on to personal information, all based on um, 
uh, just joining a queue and being notified through a web socket or push notification. So this project is probably kind of graduated out, um, but the technology within is always something that's going to be, I think, important as the pandemic grows on. Um, so if you're interested in Cloud Foundry, Platform as a Service, uh, learning how to use uh, visual recognition, geospatial, um, things like that, check out this project. Uh, you can find that through um, the GitHub, uh, which I'll, I'll point you to in a little bit. The winner from, 20, um, from 2019, uh, it came from a team in Spain. And what they did was they addressed an issue of wildlands firefighters being exposed to chemicals, not necessarily through fighting a fire that's happening, uh, for example, in a building that they're responding to. But when it comes to wildfires, a lot of it is preventative uh, work that they do. So they, are, they have a day job where they go out into an area, they set fires. And uh, these firefighters are setting fires to preemptively burn um, crops, uh, it, uh, things that would otherwise burn in a real wildfire. So they're exposed um, on a daily basis. Uh, they don't have the apparatus you see in an urban wildfire uh, firefighter. And so what this solution does is it uses um, an IoT device with some sensors baked in for carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, it uses that information, uses Bluetooth to connect to an Android mobile app, which in turn relays it up to uh, Watson IoT, uh, where it can be displayed on a React um, dashboard. So really cool um, way to explore end-to-end -end what you can do to build a sensor solution that ties to a mobile app, emits data to the cloud, where it can be analyzed um, through data science to share information in real time about what's going on in this particular IoT uh, system. So you can learn, um, you can see how this could be applied in, you know, uh, in a factory situation, uh, personal situations, uh, things like that. So um, Prometeo is the solution. Pira is now the open source project. Uh, Agrily is uh, one that won in 2020. And I see we do have a com uh, question about prizes. Yes, each of the, the three I've just talked about. Um, they won 200,000 US dollars. Um, CFQ was a finalist and they won 25,000. So they've won the cash. They can use that um, to invest in their, their project. They can do that to um, you know, spend as, as they wish. Um, or if the project is not something that you know, carries on, it's whatever they want to do with the prize money. But we do want to see them carry on as the open source projects. So uh, another one here, Agrily, uh, the winner before this year, um, they created an information for um, low literacy farmers. They tested it out in Mongolia and Brazil for farmers who are being affected by climate change, changes in um, uh, the weather that impact when and what they should grow um, and provide some preemptive guidance. This one uh, is currently underway as an open source project, not yet released. Um, so they've been doing field tests in India um, through a couple of uh, NGO partners. Uh, they've already tested in Mongolia and are releasing their app in Brazil next year. So if you're interested in uh, kind of learning about the impact of climate change, so predictive analytics using weather company NASA data sets, uh, this is a project that's going to be interesting for you uh, in the future. Uh, again, this also is built on a framework for uh, platform neutral, uh, progressive web apps, Android apps, uh, things like that. Um, and I just have a couple more projects here, but Isaac Simo, this is the one I was mentioning about um, earthquake resiliency. It actually came from a team who was responding to the 2015 earthquake in uh, Nepal. Uh, what they do is assess buildings that have been affected by the earthquake to see if they need to be torn down, if they're safe to go back into, or if they need to be retrofit or fixed. So based on their uh, earthquake, uh, based on scanning a building, uh, they can see whether um, it was a go or no go uh, for going back into it. They take their engineers expertise, help scale that to people to actually use the app and do that assessment themselves. So it helps build change uh, the organization behind it um, better, better serve their communities. And what's really interesting about this one is they built a variation of it uh, for assessing how that work has been done to fix a house afterwards. And so, for example, by looking at the spacing of bricks, um, how much mortars between them, how they fit relative to the window, 
you can use data science to find the centroids on each of those bricks, find out the variation, the deviation from the normal, and uh, use that to assess the quality of something. Uh, same with rebar, that if you have the shape of it, which reinforces concrete, if you do it in a certain way, um, it's it's more safer, more strong uh, if you do it versus it another way. So data science, visual recognition, Watson machine learning. Uh, this project is, is looking for con contributors to add different types of building elements to it and things potentially that are in different parts of the world uh, where different types of um, building standards, building materials exist. Um, so it was built originally for Nepal and Colombia, uh, but could be you know brought to India or elsewhere for someone interested in this project. Uh, liquid prep is one um, built on uh, understanding when um, crops should be watered in India was actually a use case for this. Uh, my colleague Gaurav uh, went back, interviewed farmers. Um, essentially what this does is help with water management, knowing what the current soil conditions are, using several cheap sensors deployed into a, um, uh, a farm, uh, farm or a field and assessing that up against the upcoming weather that's coming, uh, whether they should uh, water now or wait a day perhaps or um, or otherwise make better plans around watering. So IoT, um, this is also Android. This is a progressive web app as well. Uh, and you'll see many of these projects, they actually cross pollinate with each other. They use some of the same types of technology. Um, so you can build many new things based on the solutions that are already out there. Um, another earthquake related one is, is OpenEW, um, Earthquake Early Warning System. Uh, this is one that uses really cheap accelerometers that, for example, could be in your mobile phone. You know, when you play a game or do something uh, with your phone, it can tell the X, Y, Z axes. So instead of a, a really expensive billion US dollar earthquake monitoring device, a uh, single device that is at the country level, what you can do with OpenEW is create many of these little sensors, deploy them throughout a country or location. For example, we've got 50 of these deployed in, in Puerto Rico. They can each detect a little bit of a vibration around them when installed in a building and work together on a consensus algorithm to determine, yes, was that really an earthquake or was it just a large truck driving by? So they've got some really cool IoT features, lots of interesting uh, correlations and data sets. And this organization has been around for four years. They've got a huge AWS data set that you can use to study earthquakes, learn about the algorithms of the different types of waves that come out of them deep underground or travel through um, uh, land. Um, and it has, um, uh, again, a carbon-based dashboard built on React. Um, so really cutting edge open source framework for that sort of thing um, that plots them on the map. And uh, of course, there's alerting apps too that can be worked on. So this, this project is, is working through some new deployments in Haiti and Mexico and Nepal right now. Um, but in the beginning of the year, they'll release version two and really looking for new contributors to help expand this network on the pre-Himalayan uh, foothills uh, where there's a lot of earthquake activity, both in Nepal and India. Um, drone aid is an interesting visual recognition base system. This one was inspired by what happened in Puerto Rico, where after the earthquake with no connectivity, no power, people resorted to making messages, painting on parking lots in white paint on black asphalt, or using logs to draw out symbols, the, you know, the typical lost on a, a desert island and drawing out help in, you know, palm leaves or something like that. This solution standardizes um, and puts in a kit, potentially, a set of based on UN standards of things that people could have in their home, lay out on a bed sheet, or draw or hand create one of these symbols, explaining what's the issue, how many people are affected, and what I need. Um, so this is a really cool visual recognition project. It was based on drones, but you can also apply the same visual recognition engine into satellites, into civil aviation, into mobile apps. Um, so if you're really into visual recognition and potentially how um, this can be used to help people or even build a company around creating these kits. Uh, there's a lot of great opportunity in drone aid. And finally, Softwater. Uh, so Softwater was this year's Global Challenge winner. Uh, really exciting solution from a set of students from all over India. Um, they met at the 
uh, well, they met through an IBM internship program four years ago. Um, and a few of them go together to the university, um, IIT Madras in Chennai. And uh, the other ones are based in, in, um, in Goa and uh, Delhi as well. I had the pleasure of meeting them a couple of weeks ago. Um, they came through the Niti Aayog um, incubation engine. They're, they're um, the Atal Tinkering Lab for IoT solutions a few years ago and are deeply involved in the innovation community. Um, and not yet quite an open source project for contributions, but really a great story inspired by an issue that affected the developers, um, the contamination of groundwater uh, suddenly by arsenic, uh, which affected one of the developers' mothers. And in fact, all five team members have had some sort of impact by that groundwater quality issue. And so what they created was a system for that can be plugged into the pump that comes into a home or a community, uh, alert people to changes in the water quality and alert them over SMS so they don't have to do a monitor dashboard, uh, which their community manager can do, but they can get SMS alerts if something radical has changed. Uh, so we're gonna be working with them through the service core to test this um, uh, in different parts of India. We've talked about Bihar, we've talked about um, near uh, Chennai or, or in Goa itself. So really inspiring project, really great team behind this and really represents what we wanna see in Call for Code people inspired by an important issue that affects them locally, that create an open source project that affect the issue globally, and uh, that they live on, bring that innovation together and inspire others to uh, to learn new skills and put them to use. Not like as Sushil said, um, knowledge and learning is really core to what we do with Call for Code. Um, so with that, I'll wrap up. Um, if you do wanna find out more about upcoming competitions like the global one, uh, or the spot challenges that happen on a regular basis, or about those open source projects that are available now for you to learn about, contribute to, and improve. Uh, you can do all of that through developer.ibm.com slash call for code, which is the link that Karan uh, already posted in the, in the chat there. So really hope to see some of you join the Slack communities, um, uh, either the, the, the global one we have with 25,000 people for call for code in general, or through the ones, for example, for OpenEW or for ClusterDuck uh, that, that are looking for new contributors as well. Um, and as I wrap up, um, check out um, you know, the GitHub uh, projects. If you go into this project catalog one, um, which I'll drop in the chat, you can kind of see each of the repos for them. Um, as I mentioned, there's, there's developer, um, which has the the list of challenges, the competitions. Uh, you can learn about previous winners, the open source projects, kind of how they've all been deployed um, in locations around the world, some of the story that goes into them, the partners. Uh, and there's some of them actually do have like mini documentaries as well. And then, uh, as I mentioned, if you go to the Linux Foundation website, um, just under the projects list, you can find each of the um, call for code uh, projects there as well alongside Kubernetes node, let's encrypt. It's one of the, the top projects over there. Um, so with that, let me um, close it out. I believe Karan is going to help us wrap up the event. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Daniel. This is yeah. this is real piece of piece of gold, I would say. This is um, amazing stuff that you and your team are doing on on ground and and globally. It's it's a global scale, right? You're doing some California and 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 uh, Spain and India and other places of the world. So so kudos to you and thanks a lot for doing this. This is amazing. Uh, and I can see that we are we are really solving some some real real world not business but real people problem real, uh, through through technology. That is important. Always, I mean, uh, uh, we always be, are busy in solving real business problems, uh, adding more business values. But this is real human problems that uh, that you and your team are solving. And I, I and I really encourage uh, audience to uh, to you know contribute uh, in uh, in the way they can. I would definitely uh, would be interested to to you know, be a part of this. Uh, I'll reach out to you on on that side. Uh, so again, thanks a lot. Really appreciate that you're you're uh, you're telling us about this. Yeah, thank you. Well. Really inspiring all those great projects and yeah, uh, combined with this hacking culture and for the human. Yeah, good job. Exactly. Good job. Exactly. Yeah, and you can use those skills you learn in solving humanitarian problems to solve those business problems. So, yeah. a win win. Right. Yeah, a win win. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Definitely.
so so daniel a uh, quick so uh, uh, so uh, is like i'm i'm looks like you know ibm would be supporting uh, uh, these causes with some compute and watson kind of uh, credits is it is it like the way it works yeah so oh. as people join the call for code community they'll get 6 months uh, to use $200 in credits um, for some of the paid services there's a whole bunch of um, free services in the ibm cloud catalog and then um, as we define for next year, uh, we're going to see if we can expose some of the more container-based services. OpenShift is one that we want, of course, people to use. Mm. But um, yeah, so each year, normally there's there's some credits that are promoted. Um, there's promo codes, um, but it depends on what the announcement is next year. But uh, mm. yeah, there's lots of free services, 200 services in the cloud that we have. Um, and most of those at least have a free tier or a low-cost um uh, for example, serverless is a great low cost option, a lot of compute on demand uh, when it's not when you're not working on the project it scales down to zero, you're not being charged. So lots of cool you know, technology you can use to get started um, for free or low cost. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, and uh, I'm curious to also to know uh, how does uh, this gets operationalized? For example, uh, uh, the, uh, the ISEC, uh, ISEC project that you were walking us through, uh, how, can, uh, how can this be implemented uh, on ground at a bigger scale? For example, you know, builders, the house, house builders uh, at, at look, let's say in India or maybe in some other place, how can they, how can they really uh, uh, use this as a tool or as a, as a you know, go to go to thing like I mean, I get the technology. We have a technology around it, but how can how can someone like a contractor uh, who does not know about uh, these tools? How can they use this while designing new houses or building new houses? Uh, yeah, just an example. Yeah, yeah, great question. In fact, one of the cool things about Isaac Seema, I just dropped it in the chat too, is it's a framework in many ways, right? So it was built. Build Change is the organization that created it innovated on it for a specific context in Colombia, And they said, we're gonna focus on brick walls, we're gonna focus on uh, instruction elements and rebars. Um, and before that, they had another project um, that was focused on the position of windows and doors on a building to understand the structural integrity. So what they designed in Isaac Simo is a generic framework that anybody can train new models on and they can bring it into the dashboard as a uh, once they've trained that machine learning endpoint in Watson, just provide a REST API that can be linked up to a specific mobile application. So you can bring in new checks into the mobile app. So if you're only interested in certain types of checks or you created your own check that you want to bring to the marketplace of models that are available, uh, you can configure your app just to use those models. Uh, so that's the design of the open source. So it goes beyond what build change is focused on themselves to say, here's a, here's a whole generic framework anybody else can use or contribute to that improves right. it for everybody. Um, so there's still a little bit of early days for that project because they just launched this one in June with the Linux Foundation. So just a few months ago, but uh, they got some great contribution guidelines. We've got a tutorial on how you can use their existing models. Um, and then you can see what their needs are um, from, from the developer community in the link I just posted. Mm. Fantastic, yeah. All right, very cool, very cool, Daniel. Thanks a lot for sharing yeah, this information with us. Uh, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, here's the time to speak uh, uh, to to ask any questions, Daniel. Uh, if not, then we are already at uh, top of the hour here, and uh, uh, we had a great great session, great speakers uh, uh, today, and uh, uh, I think it's a time for us to wrap up. What do you say, Sebastian? Yeah, I think so. It was an awesome day. So I I missed the first session where we were. It was too early for me, but that's a good opportunity to to to, to mention that all those talks has been recorded. Uh, they will be uh, packaged and put on the Red Hat Developer YouTube channel. And usually that happens pretty fast. So maybe next week, I'm, maybe not next week because we are entering a PTO period. But I don't know, maybe. But soon, all those talks will be available on demand for everyone. So um, yeah, I can't wait for that to, to catch up on the, the talks that I missed. Yeah, yeah, talks as well as the presentations. So so yes, yeah. so so go on the days when you when you take screenshot of presentation. So <laughs> <laughs> it's all open source, right? Our code is open and everything is open. Uh, uh, so yes, thank you. So uh, so Anna, any any last uh, last tips and advices to uh, to our audience here? 
Oh, well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining. Um, it, it, was, it was great. And as Sebastian said, I'm looking forward to seeing the other sessions as well. Um, I've seen some uh, comments in the chat about Helm as well. I uh, like Helm, and I'm like, looking forward to like watch the other sessions as well. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot to learn. Um, so it was a great, great event. And thank you, everybody, for chiming in and um, you know being present in the chat. It was a live chat. It was a really good live chat. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I hope we can make it again next year. Oh, definitely. So, yeah. Let's 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 hope that. Uh, I think last year uh, was it not last year? Last last year was Dev Nation Day India was an in-person event in Bangalore, oh. and 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 Burr and, uh, uh, and I think you were also there, right, Sebastian? No. No. Well, no. Uh, like Kamesh probably was there. Kamesh, yes, uh, Kamesh and Edson. Yeah. So Edson, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We have That's... to skip. We have to skip last year, and then uh, this year it's virtual. But yeah, next year hopefully, and hopefully we all can see uh, each other in in person oh, and yeah. can have. Can you know? So can, nothing can beat in-person events. <laughs> I, I can't wait to go back to Bangalore. I, I've been there right. several times, and I love it. I love being there. Right. So I, yeah, I really hope next year. Let's see how yeah. it goes, and uh, yeah, that will be awesome. Right. All right. Then, then I have I have uh, uh, just few 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 things to share with the audience before we leave. I'm, so I'm going to share my screen and just show you. Uh, what's next? What next you can do uh, uh, with uh, with Kubernetes and how you can you know sharpen your I cloud cloud natives IQ on Kubernetes? So I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know uh, if you guys can see this. I'm trying this for the first time today. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, so number one link uh, is is my personal favorite right now is uh, uh, is uh, developers.reddit.com/learn. In here you will see a lot of micro interactive tutorials built by built by our team. So it uh, you can just filter out. There are lots of lots of great topics in here, and these are uh, you know learning by doing kind of examples. So, for example, if I go, if I go to Quarkus and do a search, you know, let's see if we have search is broken. Oh, okay, search is broken. <laughs> Okay, good. So uh, feedback from my team. Uh, but anyways, if you if you click on any of these sessions, uh, any of these tile in here, oh, um, now you know what we, well. just, Karen, we have an issue with the website. I pinged the people. Um, if you open that, oh. in... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what is happening. It, maybe if you open that in a in an incognito window five private word for me oh, let's try that let's try this is this is now the real real fun stuff Man. <laughs> let's debug it live with all, all the people seeing this let's see yeah exactly if we can make it happen okay this works and if i do interactive uh, uh session of 4.9 playground let's... oh yeah this works this is a hack daniel uh sebastian <laughs> exactly <laughs> no you know what it was working like few hours back Oh yeah, so was, been, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so so guys, this is this is how you can you can launch an interactive setup, uh, 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 and follow instruction. You will get an OpenShift environment to play around. You you will actually get you know a, a curated tutorial that you can follow along. And uh, uh, so yes, so this is one way one way to launch uh, uh, launch op uh, OpenShift uh, uh, no charge and uh, uh, follow some guides. The other way is uh, an another one is a, a developer sandbox. You can simply sign up for a developer sandbox free of cost. Again, you will get a full blown uh, 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 cluster of, uh, of OpenShift in which you can run almost anything. Right, as long as uh, 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 yeah, it does not require. I mean, it supports serverless. It supports few more operators as well. But you just need to log in with your account and get grab your your free copy or not copy if your free free link or free account for uh, for sandbox. And looks like this will also work in incognito. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. So I've got my task. I'm gonna fix it uh, as soon as I I get out of this uh, um, this live stream, and uh, I'll I'll make sure this will work. But yeah, trust me, trust me, uh, this was working like a few minutes back. <laughs> Something weird going on. Uh, but yes, developer sandbox and uh, um, the interactive sessions uh, that our team has created. And to do some promotion, actually tomorrow I'm going to speak on, a, on, a, on another topic under Dev Nation Tech Talks. Talking about GitHub Actions on OpenShift and how you can, you know, how you can uh, uh, supercharge your development loops. Like, okay, gone are the days where you're going to run those commands manually but let's let's use it the open uh, github actions and openshift way 
So uh, uh, tomorrow uh, at uh, at uh, 12 p.m. EST, I'm gonna have uh, join this session with uh, with Adson. So so that's all I have to share with the team here. Uh, I'll show I'll uh, I'll share those links uh, in here uh, in the chat. And uh, thank you so much again for for joining in and uh, spending time with us uh, this morning and this afternoon. Uh, thanks, Sebastian. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Daniel, for super early morning. And now you yeah. can go and have have a have a morning tea. <laughs> and uh, and thanks a lot to all the speakers who uh, who helped us and uh, um there was there were great topics java and and you know algorithms and who uh, and GitOps and you know uh, jenkins and you know uh, call for code so so really excited to to wrap up this session here yeah yeah and thank you to all the attendees as well and as anna said the, the chat was mm -hmm. awesome that's the great thing with the virtual stuff is that we have the chat. Uh, if there's yeah. one thing that I like about virtual, I, I like in-person meetings, but with virtual, yeah. you have the chat. And people can just interact during your session. Because right. in a real conference, you don't have someone standing up in the middle of your talk saying, hey, or speaking with others. With the virtual setup in this chat, yes. you can build a new kind of community. And yeah, I, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there is still one 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 question unanswered. So Anna, what do you call uh, uh, people who code in Java? Oh, exactly. <laughs> what? Java knots. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> Java <nuts. laughs> Lol, I cannot believe I missed that one. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. I've seen all the other jokes with the coffee and everything. I was actually look, looking oh. at my coffee cup when I when, some, when the person was look. asking. Oh, was that like, was really a liter of coffee, Sebastian. I yeah, thought you were. I was not joking. I just finished. Oh, my yeah, yeah, oh yeah. man, oh. you're yeah. super serious about Java and coffee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. We need to be supercharged. Exactly. Oh yes, yeah. yeah, supercharged and supersonic. supersonic yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, uh, see you. See you next time. Yeah. See you see next you. time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye all.